The Massive Ordnance Air Blast, also known as the MOAB, was, at the time of its design, the most powerful bomb in the American arsenal that was non-nuclear. With a blast yield of 11 tons of TNT, the MOAB packs a crazy punch. The MOAB was first and only used in combat in 2017 when it was dropped in Afghanistan to destroy terrorist tunnels deep underground. It was quite successful in its deployment. You might know about it because you got the killstreak back in Modern Warfare 3 while children screamed slurs at you on Xbox Live. Or maybe you're a big fan of the military. Either way, doesn't really matter. Today we'll be seeing the second usage of such a weapon. This video isn't really crazy serious or anything, essentially I'm just mocking Michael McCrudden for his comments about production value being so important and whatnot, so I decided to do a bootleg content nuke to pretend like it was truly that important, but in reality this is hardly any different than any other video that I would make. But today, I'm going to be defending a few of my favorite YouTube channels from some very obvious bullshit that's taken place here on the platform. Michael McCrudden uploaded a video on June 1st that I will be responding to to pretty, uh, pretty systemically in this video, I guess. Now, these channels are a part of the wider commentary community here on YouTube and are some of the biggest examples of the commentary community. And when I saw this, I knew that I was going to end up responding. Now, personally, I feel like maybe Michael was addressing me very indirectly throughout this video as well, considering, well, he has me blocked on Twitter because I criticized him for his usage of his content. He talks about commentary communities being leeches off of one another and talks about production value when it comes to some ordinary gamers, insinuating that, well, commentary channels don't genuinely have that great of production value. Maybe he wasn't addressing me. I don't know, but personally, I feel felt like maybe uh, he just didn't say my name and kind of meant it a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Simply because I was one of the people who called him out. Today though, I am defending some ordinary gamers and Penguin Zero or Moist Critical primarily, and to a certain extent both Quite and Adam22. These four were called out by Michael in a video that he did about some ordinary gamers. This video is a goldmine of hypocritical behavior and slip-ups that prove many people's suspicions. Now, really, I don't want to keep you too long, so I guess we can just jump right on into this whole thing. Plus, the last time this happened, well, I didn't stand up for myself, and it had a long-term effect on this channel. Also, my reputation. Michael makes the claim that him not standing up for himself when YouTubers have called him out for his behavior in the past has led to damages to his reputation. Personally, I find this to be very unfounded and ridiculous. First off, nobody else, quote, ruined your reputation. Your reputation was run into the ground when you decided that every single notable death was an opportunity to print out a free video. You and your actions have caused a chain reaction over months, where every single time something like this happens, you personally reinforce the negative opinions that the community has of you. It's your videos that give you this reputation. I mean, do you honestly believe that the YouTube community saw your videos on XXX Tentacion, Juice World, Etika, Kobe Bryant, and his daughter? and plenty more. And we're just like, yeah, this guy is really opportunistic and jumps to make a video at every single death, bro. He's awesome. Maybe videos about you more or less echoed some concerns about what you were doing, but I don't see Muda going to your house and putting a gun to your head forcing you to make these videos. At a certain point, you just have to take your own personal responsibility for what you do. Thing is, you knew damn good and well that what you were doing was going to be controversial. I mean, you disabled likes and dislikes along with the comments on your George Floyd video. And YouTube creators, especially I would, you know, say seasoned veterans like yourself, know exactly what this is. It's a cop-out. We as a community don't disable these features unless we know that what we're doing is wrong or going to be viewed negatively, yet you were quick to have that video out knowing this. That just leads me to believe that you knew that it was going to harm your public image and people would be mad, but hey, who cares, right? You know, you got great views, at, at least, you know, for, for your channel. But with that being said, he just had his best month yet with nearly 30 million views and 150,000 subscribers. So congrats to him on that. Guy's killing the game. Maybe now he can up his production value. I mean, he's just sitting in a bedroom that looks like he jerked off in. Something that Michael said in his video I found very funny, okay? He makes a remark about the production value of some ordinary gamers' videos. Es essentially, I mean, trying to make a point that because Mudahar just films himself in a room talking about whatever that it is that he wants to talk about, that, well, his videos may be somehow less quality 
somehow less important, maybe. Now, this is a point that I've seen on YouTube too many times to count. If you aren't making visually perfect, high quality productions, then, well, the video isn't good or is at least subpar quality. First off, uh, th that's a stupid fucking point to make in the first place, let's be honest. YouTube is not television. Creators don't have to make these insane productions to have great videos. Well, I mean, as a matter of fact, if you ask me who I'd rather watch, some ordinary gamers talking in his room about something he's, you know, passionate about talking about, or someone who edits their videos for 200 hours and their video is just boring as fuck because they spent so long editing the video that there's hardly any personality to it and the only thing that it provides is quote good editing, you can bet that I'll be watching Mudahar. Most YouTube viewers don't need flashy production to enjoy a video. If viewers gave a fuck about production value this deeply, they'd be watching television, where they pour millions of dollars into episodes of shows. But, well, I mean, we've seen the numbers. YouTube viewership increases all the time, but television viewership? Not doing so hot compared to how it was back in the peak and golden age of television. TV's pretty much, I guess, on the decline. It, it just, it's not something that people are willing to pay for anymore. YouTube has always been a place where amateur video creators can just do their thing, and if someone wants to go a step beyond, then by all means go for it. Now the funniest part about it is that Michael's channel statistics prove this point for me perfectly. I mean, it, it really couldn't line up any better. I mean, Michael's channel has about 3.3 million subscribers. Very great accomplishment, might I add. It's definitely not an easy feat to do that. Mudahar has 1.9 million, so, I mean, Michael's channel is effectively at least one and a half times, you know, almost two times the size of Mudahar's. But when you compare their viewership, it's night and day. Let's take a look at the daily averages according to Social Blade, which has always been a very credible source for YouTube information. Muda is averaging seven times the amount of daily subscribers. He's averaging three times the amount of views. If his channel's video production is so important and really for commentary channels to have such great production in the first place, then how come he's stomping you out? And the video output is pretty comparable between the two. They both upload daily or near daily. Michael, if video production is so important, then how come relative to your channel size, Nobody watches your videos. That is, unless it's about 6 9 news or before they were gone. I mean, no offense, but I mean, if we're keeping it a buck fifty here, you need to do a before they were gone on your own channel. This is sad, man. Now, I'm clearly pissed off having to make this video, but if you want me to make more videos like this one, I'll take a crack at a few other YouTubers who have talked about me in the past. How about Penguin Zero, Quite, or Adam22? Uh, I mean, once again, Critical or Penguin Zero is somewhat comparable to Muda in this situation, you know? He, he films himself giving his opinions on things, but the only difference is his channel is much larger than yours, and at the same time, he's making you look goofy in viewership numbers too. You, you can't even make a point against him. I mean, you just, you're going to just put the name in the title for views because that's all you have. Um, you know, people are, like, half the world does know who the hell these people are. And they're like, well, what's so interesting? All of a sudden, I'm telling you why this person's important, what, what isn't been unearthed, and uh, it's like a digestible, respectful piece. So how the f am I, like, doing Ouija sh Like, that's ridiculous. Half the people in the world don't know who these people are? <laughs> That's really the claim we're gonna go with here, and, and you're the one who's going to introduce these people to them. Let's get this straight. Virtually everyone connected to the internet or television or the sports world in, in general, or at least American basketball, knew who Kobe Bryant was. He's one of the most iconic athletes of all time. It's not even comparable for most athletes to him. Kobe is a legend. XXX Tentacion, years after his death, currently has 25.1 million monthly listeners just on Spotify. That doesn't count SoundCloud, Pandora, Apple Music, Google Play's music, Amazon Music, YouTube, or really any other streaming or physical numbers. He has two songs over 1 billion streams on Spotify. Three more are within a few hundred million of being there, and will probably end up passing it. Only 81 songs as of this recording ever have accomplished the billion listen feat on Spotify. Who is watching your video who hasn't heard of these people, at least in passing? Maybe a very small percentage, but to act like you're the one exposing these people to a wider audience is fucking absurd. Now, Michael McCrudden, for those of you who don't know, is a, is a YouTube channel that basically covers, you know, the rich life of individuals, basically makes, like, pieces on YouTubers that, uh, I, I, I would say for the most part are, are kind of laughable. Okay, so the laughable part, I had to go get my computer. We actually have a list of all the people that have embraced the show. 
We got Nicki Minaj, DJ Khaled, Dan Bilzerian, Cardi B, Lil Pump, Amber Rose, Black China, Justin Bieber, Drake, PewDiePie, Russell Brand, Russell Peters, Dead Mouse, The Undertaker, Lil Xan, Lil Nar, Team 10, Azzy Land, 21 Savage, 22 Savage, Tory Lane, Soldier Boy, Rich Chigga, Cash Me Outside, Stitches Nelly, Jersey Shore Cast, Kid Boo, French Montana, Fousey Tube, Team 10, Lil Skies, Tech 9, Juice World, Will, Mike Will Made It, Logan Paul, and more. We made that back in 2018. These are all the people that are saying, wow, this guy does a fantastic job. So uh, laughable is, is great. Okay, uh, so how exactly does having a list of celebrities who are okay with your channel not make it laughable? This isn't defeating criticism. You're just making a point that was never made. Mudahar never said, you know, no celebrities like this show. You're fighting an argument that doesn't even exist. Michael McCrudden will absolutely crap out a video ahead of time. I don't know whether it's to capitalize on, on the views. It is. It's so easy for this guy to just like on everything. We have a bunch of requests that come in on the daily. There are new artists to do each and every week. I never stop. Like, the show, it works seven days a week, 365 days a year. We never stop. There's like staff, employees. This, this show's just gotta move. I don't care if I get 10,000 views or a million views. It's just whatever's trending or whatever my audience requests, we get it done. It's just like media. It's like, how, what, do you get, what do you want me to do, not work? Nobody, once again, is making the point that you cannot work. You're making arguments that don't exist and then trying to defeat those to look like you're actually addressing points head on. People are critical of you because you literally, right after someone passes away, are printing videos out to capitalize off of their deaths. And you can't even make the argument that you're not. As a matter of fact, a couple times throughout this video, you essentially admit to it, but just not directly. Look at how great your other content does. This is plenty of content to show. It's not a coincidence that your video on George Floyd's death is one of the highest viewed videos that you've put out in recent weeks. So you're openly admitting that you push these videos out as soon as you can before you think people will grill you on it because you know that it's a trending story? Why couldn't you just admit this before instead of trying to beat around the bush? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to show you one of these videos, okay? This, this this right here. It's not it's not too massive, but if you look over here, this is George Floyd before they were gone. So what bugs me about this is that people used to really grill me like, yo, too soon, man, because it was the day of the day after. So what are we now? Three or four days later and still now wait a week. Why don't I just wait a year? We did we did Uncle Phil the other day because it was trending. It was everyone wanted to know because the, the cast of the Fresh Prince reacted. And man, these are some of the more like touching videos that I've produced, like the ones with the true amount of heart. So if you want me to just sit around and wait all week, well, why don't you wait next week? Why are you gonna talk about me now? You, you're just doing the exact same thing. And how come nobody will wait to criticize you, right? Probably because you're still alive. The people that you've criticized for making videos on are not. You're not a trending story because of an unfortunate death or killing at the hands of the police. What is it with you and trying to delegitimize a point against you by just making a point that doesn't exist? Okay, so the dislikes, yes, we had to turn them off. Uh, the video went up, everything was fine. It wasn't until the, uh, the like, uh, what do you call it? The commentary people on Twitter started posting it and then sending their fans to, to swarm it. Criticizing you on Twitter and calling you out for something is, quote, sending fans to swarm it. This right here highlights how well you understand criticism because yeah, you, you don't. Okay, so a good argument against this here. We have a Spanish channel, does the exact same stuff. Obviously it's in Spanish, it has its own host. Now she doesn't have a hate mob that is out to get her every time she posts a video. She just carries on with her show. People enjoy the content, they find it respectful. So she posted uh, a video yesterday on the same topic and um, she got 16,000 likes, 270 dislikes. So without uh, a mob of people on Twitter sending traffic, without everyone villainizing the show without watching it, we would have had to turn off those likes. It is, it is this, the community on YouTube that is just trying to cancel people for anything is why it happened. No, it's the fact that most people have zero idea that you have a Spanish channel. Most people don't know of that affiliation. The English speaking crowd isn't looking for your Spanish channel. They're seeing what you post in English though. And a channel spoken in a completely different language often doesn't fully understand the context of the situation here in the United States. Sure, they might see that something happened here, but they generally don't live here. Only about 13% of the US population even speak Spanish at all. About 37 million people. 572 million people globally speak Spanish. 
The US, being one of the largest countries on the planet, not only in terms of land but in population, and being one of the most culturally diverse countries on the planet, doesn't even account for 10% of the total speaking population of that language that you're trying so hard to use to defend yourself. I mean, you set yourself up for this way too easily. The people who claim that they're being cancelled simply for being openly criticized are the people truly doing harm to anti-cancel culture. I mean, where is the cancellation of your channel? Where are the people calling for it? Where, where's the trending hashtags? Where are all these videos where people directly say that you, as a creator, need to be stopped by an outside force? Where is that? I mean, I didn't see a trend. I didn't see any content creators call openly for your channel to be deplatformed by YouTube or something. It seems like you're just making shit up to me, but hey, when you think that being criticized is quote having people send their fans to swarm you, I can understand how you would fail to realize this. Seven minute video. It's also got no ads running on it. That wasn't that wasn't noticed. Uh, he didn't make mention of the fact that we ran no ads. There's nothing, no profit made here. Um, what what are the labor costs? I don't know. Maybe 500 bucks of us putting this out there for nothing. Um, okay. And it's seven minutes. So we're not even like you know going to 10 minutes. I hey, shut up. There was a lot more to say. The petition, but I already knew that this video was gonna get shit on. So I said, uh, if you get it to like 10.02, you're gonna look like an asshole. So I just said, let's just, let's just make it short and sweet. Okay, I don't really think that this point makes sense. Go figure, and here's why. You can make videos about a death and run it with no ads. That's cool. As a matter of fact, I've done this three times that I can count off the top of my head. X, XX Tentacion, and I did it with Nipsey Hussle, rest in peace to everyone here. And uh, Etika, I did it with Etika as well. But the thing is, is these are all topics that very personally affected me. I'm a huge rap fan. Nipsey Hussle is a legitimate idol of mine. Etika was a tragic situation for the whole YouTube community. These kinds of videos are not the bread and butter of my channel though. These are very one-off videos that I don't ever make often enough, you know? I, I don't make videos about every single person passing. But this kind of content has effectively become the bread and butter of your channel. So people are gonna stick around and maybe watch other monetized videos based solely off of these ones. This is something that I've struggled with in the past when I uploaded those personal videos, where I'm ver very clearly upset by the passing of these people. You will indirectly gain from these, especially so if they're the bread and butter of your channel like it is for you. So you knew that you were gonna get shit beforehand and even intentionally shortened the video because of this, but yet it was the cancel culture's fault that you turned off the ratings and comments. Basically reading just a giant zeitgeist of information right there and then and putting it together in a video. Which is fair, but like, no one that knew who this guy was. Like, there isn't one article. I need like seven to a dozen sources. I'm going into like old friends' Instagram accounts. I'm finding all sorts of clips and stuff. I did more research for that than you did for this. Did you seriously just make the argument that nobody knew who George Floyd was? Or am I misunderstanding because you misspoke a little bit there? I, I don't know, genuine question. George Floyd was the topic of the nation before you covered his death. I would even go as far to argue that that's the reason you even knew about him and had the opportunity to make such a video. I don't know what it is with you and pretending like the before they were famous channel is the channel that is sparking conversations about people dying and acting like your videos are what truly sheds light on them. It's borderline ego egotistical if not fully there. And I would hope that you did more research making a biography for someone than Mudahar did by criticizing a video that you did, which is a general trend for your content. So it doesn't take a lot of evidence to see what you are, Michael. Now the rest of this video is interesting because as you can see, he just basically covers the facts you find on the internet anyways. But no one goes and finds, like if you wanna go read it and spend the four hours researching it, then go do it. I've saved all that time. I've, I've actually put it in work to make some quality content. So like what, he's just gonna shit on anything. <laughs> it doesn't take four hours of research to find out who George Floyd was. Most news articles, at least the ones that I've read, detail his work history, interviews with people who knew him, basic information, old pictures of him. Barely anything you've provided, if anything at all, is content that the media hasn't shown already. Sure, perhaps maybe they didn't go through an old friend's Instagram to get a picture that you showed, but to act like dozens of photos of George weren't plastered in the national media is silly. You can't be this naive, Michael. Please, don't, please don't tell me that. But if I acted, if I was crying, then all of a sudden that would be a problem. You can't win. I'm not sure whoever said that. Amazing! Amazing! That was all put together in a nice, presentable package. Um, and in a respectful way. So, well, 
I thank you. It's good content. I appreciate it. The argument isn't whether or not you're making good content which is a discussion that can be had in and of itself for anyone making YouTube videos. You can say my videos are not high quality, and that argument can be made, of course. I mean, it's one that I welcome, as a matter of fact. I don't have to say that people are swarming hatred my way when they say things like that, you know? The argument is that you push these videos out as fast as possible to capitalize off of the deaths of people. You're finding a point that doesn't exist for God knows how many times now. It's not so different than 3AM channels that do like Ouija board shit. It is different. That is disgusting. Mine is traditional media. You are not traditional media. You are a YouTube channel. You take things from traditional media and then combine it together for YouTube videos, but that doesn't make you traditional media. Are you a radio station? A TV station? Newspaper? Magazine? Okay. Didn't think so. You should probably know what these things are before you say that. Maybe wait a week or two until you have more comprehensive data and make like a pretty banger video out of it. Listen, we make epic videos, we've waited weeks, we do uh, interviews, like I got a full show, I got three channels here, I'm making some quality content, putting in a lot of work doing different stuff each and every day. Only time you guys talk about me is when you can sh** on me. Because these are the only times that you can get views. These are the only times in which you're presented outward to anyone. Once again, maybe three years ago people were watching the other content that you really put out. Now, you can't even get a tenth of your subscribers to watch pretty much any of your content. This is a common metric, by the way, that I've heard other YouTubers talk about. If you can't get more than a tenth of your views on average from subscribers, then your channel is dead or dying. You only consistently break 100,000 views on these types of videos on a 3.3 million subscriber channel. That is the discussion to be had. I like how you follow me on Twitter, dude. It's gonna be a an awkward scenario. I did. I did follow him on Twitter. I actually decided to follow a lot of these, um, I didn't understand this cancel culture community, right? So I decided to actually follow them to understand how they work, how they like leech off each other. Oh, this is going. Oh yeah, him. Oh, I got a story now for my channel. It was interesting. I, I, I honestly hate Twitter. I don't want to be on there. It's just all negativity. Um, but that's why I followed him. I kind of wanted to see how these guys operate. Once again, you're, you're using cancel culture as a term quite liberally, okay? No one is attempting to cancel you. Nobody with a voice worth a shit, at least. Maybe a two follower account on Twitter is saying we should cancel you, but you keep acting as if like the commentary community is out here just like fucking, I don't know, trending you on Twitter saying that you need to be ended and that you gotta go. This isn't a way to deflect criticism, okay? And how ironic, first off, that you, you talk about leeching. You can't make a video on your channel that doesn't revolve around a celebrity. You would have nothing without famous people existing and eventually dying. Yet commentators leech off of one another, quote? I've never even directly spoken with Mudahar or Critical or Quite. To pretend like this community just rips off of all of each other is insane. Sure, many of us think that you're slimy, but that doesn't mean that we're leeching off of one another. Michael, be honest, you followed them because you cannot handle criticism. You say that you wanted to see how they operate, but I think we both know that that's not true. And you probably, but of course this is a very big assumption, were looking for shit that you could use against them. But I'll agree with you that Twitter is a completely awful place most of the time. But I don't think that's because people say that what I do is wrong. I think that it's because it's actually just a terrible website. See, I don't need to follow people who say that I'm wrong. Most level-headed people don't. It's not that deep to most of us. And I find it funny that you blocked me on Twitter, Michael. Did I say something here, maybe, that hurt your feelings? Maybe when I suggested that you delete your YouTube channel? Let me guess, that was me attempting to cancel you, right? By encouraging you to make an action on your behalf. That's not cancellation, Michael. That's just a suggestion. So that's the worst part about all this is like, all these people are no better than me. Like you're gonna make a sh video on me just calling me and you're doing the exact same thing. I will give you credit actually that you didn't use uh, George Floyd in the thumbnail. Um, and uh, I'm not even that popular anymore. So it's actually like a bold move. I don't know if I get that many views for people. Yeah, uh, criticizing you for your entire foundation being hinged on people dying for YouTube clicks is not the same thing. But you're right, you're not that popular anymore. You're only relevant when you make these kinds of videos where a death is exploitable. But uh, that's it. Listen, essentially, there's no winning. Um, my name got tainted in a bad way. My Spanish channel, not tainted. Everything's A-OK. -okay. I've been doing biographies for five years now. It's just how the news cycle works. You know what I mean? I'd love to talk about Johnny Depp every day, Jim Carrey more so, every day. But that's just not what people are into. They wanna know 
about who's trending and and we decide to do it as respectfully and tastefully as we can yeah people don't watch actual content not based on people dying when it comes from you go figure that one would be true everybody that's what's funny about this whole video you spent the whole time attempting so hard to dispute the idea that you don't do this for your channel's own gain but then you say shit like this that expresses how you really feel maybe script this next time so your own wording doesn't expose itself that's really weird uh some ordinary gamers critical and i uh, we all make videos about trending topics and things that are in the news we all do pretty well for ourselves i'd say the only difference is that our channels aren't completely centered around the fact that celebrities pass away or viral clips of people getting killed by the police exist. You can do trending topics. In fact, when it comes to people like 6 9 you actually can pull some viewership and get people to watch. But then all of that goes out the window when someone dies. Why is that? I mean, I know the answer, and I know that you know the answer because you've said it a couple times throughout this video. Their deaths equal views for you. It gets your channel attention you quote unquote entertain people by exploiting these things. Your regular content doesn't get views. It's no coincidence that this is what you do. And it's no coincidence that people think that it's shitty, but you know, keep trying to justify it with arguments that don't exist and by pretending you didn't say what you said about it getting attention from people. But you can't not do this series because it's the only thing keeping your channel relevant. It's the last line of defense. Unless you completely 180'd your channel, nuked it and started over, you're stuck to that. It's what keeps you relevant. This isn't some moral stand for you. Nobody's trying to run you away. You're not a victim. But hey, it's easy to act like you are for people who don't know any better. And uh, listen, there's people out there that don't like me because I compete with them. They're in the news category or hip hop, whatever. And they're just looking for a reason to sh on me. And a lot of these people are criminals, like have actually done bad things. So, uh, and you're very subtly talking about Adam22 when you reference the criminal history and the hip-hop channels that you supposedly compete with. So, uh, first off, I was quite confused when you said that these people are, quote, criminals. I've heard of some allegations made by two women, but I've never heard about Adam having a criminal history. So, I, you know, just went straight to Adam and asked him about it very openly. He says that he has no criminal history, and I really don't have a reason to not believe him. You keep referencing the assault allegations made by these two females a few years back, but allegations on the internet aren't a part of someone's criminal history. He's not a criminal, at least as far as the law sees it. That's a pretty damaging allegation to make against somebody, to say that they're a criminal. And Adam was also happy to share his side of the story about the allegations that you're bringing up as well. And I've provided both sides of the story that are available right here from both Adam and the two women who accused him. I don't need to tell my viewers how they should think about that. Hey, you go ahead and read what you see here and you can make the decision for yourself. And I know he's not even a bad guy. I know he's doing this because he's doing so well now. But like back in the day, he used to like hate on these cancel culture channels, so. Yeah, he's not a bad guy, at least from what I know about him. He's not criticizing you because he's doing well now. That argument doesn't even make any fucking sense. Wouldn't he, by your own logic, be more likely to criticize you if he wasn't doing well so that he could get views by bashing you, quote unquote? And once again, criticism doesn't equal cancel culture. I have yet to see anyone you're referencing try to turn the YouTube platform against you and get the whole website to take you out. I've never seen them tell their fans openly to just come shit on you on your videos, which is something that you're essentially accusing us of, or to not watch you because they want your channel to die out. You're trying really hard to be a victim when you aren't one. Michael, it's time to stop, buddy. So I think I've covered pretty much everything that I wanted to say. I mean, Michael is very quick to criticize other creators for their production value, how quickly they made videos about him and more, but completely folds under as much pressure as one tweet directed at him. I guess the difference between me and Michael is that I will actually, you know, say the shit that I want to say to him, but then he blocks me. So, Michael, uh, I don't know if you actually directed me uh, any of what you said, but uh, I, like I said, I, I feel like maybe you did, considering that I am part of the commentary community and I was one of the people who criticized you. Do I hate Michael personally? No, not at all. Do I wish him bad? No, I actually don't. Do I think that what he does is extremely hypocritical and fucked up? Yeah, I do. I get that Michael for some reason thinks that being criticized is an attack on him as a person just a complete sword in the gut twist and pull the intestines out or something crazy, but it isn't. If you listen to what people were saying as much as you claim when it comes to your audience recommending more dead people to cover, maybe you would get the point. I don't know. But to pretend like people watch you because of your production value or the other videos that aren't the deaths is asinine. You're very obviously upset by what people say about you, which is, to a certain point at least, understandable, you know? But your reaction isn't, Michael. 
You're just going to have to accept that guys who talk behind gameplay or their webcam or whatever it be about their opinions simply just get more traffic than you do. But using dead celebrities to try and claw back into relevancy isn't going to help any. I don't really care if you have me blocked on Twitter. That's all right. You're, you're one of many. But this needed to be said, and I'm sure that it probably isn't something that you wanted to hear. But that's okay. With all of that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at sub to Optimus. Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below for the freshest official Optimus merchandise. Thank you to my channel members. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus dropping the Moab and signing out.